Foundation 45 is a 501c3 nonprofit that funds counseling services for mental health, addiction, and suicide survivors. In addition to providing services, it works to break the stigma surrounding these topics. Foundation 45 recognizes that musicians, artists, and creative types are often at a higher risk for issues with mental health and addiction. The organization's goal is to serve the Dallas-Fort Worth creative community by providing free, top-tier mental health and recovery services. You can learn more about Foundation 45 at foundation45.org. Foundation 45. Live fast, die old. I'm Andrew Sherman. I'm a Texas transplant who has always been in pursuit of art as a career. I've played in bands, pursued an acting career in Hollywood, but I found it behind the lens of a camera here in Dallas, Texas. I was born in New York, I've lived in Chicago, Los Angeles, Austin, but I love Dallas. There's a magical artistic scene in Dallas that mostly goes unnoticed to the outside world. This podcast is focused on what makes it so special and the people who make it thrive artistically. If you don't live here, and even if you do, you might not have heard of them. This is the Dallas Famous Podcast. So who you gonna be? Who you gonna be when you are? Who you gonna be? Who you gonna be when you are? For us, yeah. This week on the Dallas Famous Podcast, we have Faith Alicia Sword. Faith started a solo project during lockdown that became Penny Board. She sang for the very first time in front of other people at her first band rehearsal. Since then, she's done more shows and had some fantastic releases and has more shows coming up. Faith is the content manager for Do 214, where she helps curate coverage of cool things going on in Dallas. This one's short, but it's super sweet. So here's the charming Faith Elisa Sword. We are back at the Deep Elm Community Center, and I have the lovely Faith Alicia Sword. Now, let's start out. Tell me, how would you describe yourself if people asked you, like, you know, creatively um i kind of do a lot of different things i am in a band uh called penny board it's well it's more like a solo project um it's like my stage name and then i also work for d214 which is like a great resource for everything going on in dfw um and i also just started a dance party that's like a pretty new thing Mm. um called girly pop hours okay (laughs) i just saw the flyer for that so that's just you're just throwing an event as our reoccurring events or is it yeah it's like a, a queer pop dance party i'm not really sure how often we're gonna have it but it's yeah it's pretty new pretty mm-hmm. excited about it um where is it happening um it's at rbc in deep Ellum. oh wow so. okay god i've been there in forever yeah it's still happening huh <laughs> Mm-hmm. Is it mostly dance there now? They do live dance there? Um, yeah, they've brought back some some live shows, but they have like comedy nights, a whole bunch of dance parties, just huh. a lot of good stuff going on there. Interesting. You probably have your finger on the pulse from Do It 204 more than... For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, get, we'll get to that. Let's start with you. I mean, first of all, where were you, where are you from? I'm actually from Wichita Falls, Texas. Oh, okay. So two hours north of here, um, you know... Grew up in a small town, always dreamed of going to the big city. So, <laughs> yeah, I went to college in Denton. Um, I went to UNT. Um, and, yeah, I just never left. I really love the area. I like that it's close to Dallas, but, mm-hmm. like, it's also a quiet little town is what I'm used to. Sure. What were you studying there? Media art. So, originally, I wanted to go into the film industry, and then I quickly realized that wasn't really my thing, um, despite, you know, like being a photographer and shooting video for a lot of local bands. I was like, I think I want to go into marketing. So I started focusing a lot of my classes on social media marketing, and that's pretty much what I do now. Hmm. Okay. But um, but you also have a band that you didn't really start. I, I, it's interesting that you didn't start it until fairly recently. Yeah, it was actually um, the summer of 2020. I was supposed to study abroad in Spain, and because of COVID, that trip got canceled. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, and I was like, well, I have all this free time, and I had always wanted to be in a band since I've always been, like, behind the scenes, and I was like, I think I could do it, so um, (laughs) my husband, you know, like, helped me start writing everything, and then I started collaborating with a whole bunch of different people, and yeah, Penny Board was born. <laughs> nice. So he kind of like produces the music or you write it and he just helps you facilitate or how does that work? He helped me like 
get everything started in the beginning he's also in his own band called new heroes so that's like his main focus but Mm -hmm. he plays drums for me at like my live shows and now i primarily work with uh jojo centineo based out of los angeles Mm, okay like when you play live what's it look like the setup um i so always have a drummer no matter what um and then we usually have bass and guitar um sometimes we'll have you know, like a lead guitar and rhythm guitar, but usually it's just like lead guitar and then rhythm will be on tracks. So, So, I mean, I, so I didn't, you know, I'm a little older and I missed like the power punk scene, although I'm familiar with it now. And I heard the song Karma and it just made me think like if Bowling for Soup had a female singer. It was like my first thought. (laughs) Yeah, I like, I grew up listening to like MySpace music, if you want to call it that, like finding all my favorite bands on MySpace. Um, Mm. So... Yeah, it, seem, it'll, it'll never go away. <laughs> you don't seem old enough for MySpace, but I guess, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Funny. Okay. So, uh, like, okay, so that's the, like, that was kind of your influence. Um, that's just so interesting. Um, like, I remember reading somewhere um, that you were, okay, well, let's let's even back up. We'll come back to this. Back up. So, like, you, you were playing some music when you were little. You played violin and said you played other instruments. Is that right? Yeah. I actually, I grew up playing violin. I started playing in, like, fifth grade. And, like, it was literally, like, my whole life. Um, oh, wow. Okay. And I thought I was going to, like, like, go to school, like, in, for violin and, like, be in, like, a big orchestra and everything. But... I started discovering like a whole bunch of different things throughout high school. I took like dance classes. I started learning how to play drums. I picked up guitar, ukulele. Um, I was in theater for a little bit. (laughs) So Mm. I just get like really curious about like so many different things. And I'm like, well, why not just try it? I'll just give it a shot. And if I don't want to do this anymore, then I don't have to. So sure. Yeah. Yeah, It's interesting too, because like, I mean, obviously I'm a photographer as well and it is creative, but it's not a performance creative and so it's interesting to me that you were around this stuff but then it took you a while to get like I mean like okay so you you started putting songs out online right yes so how long before you actually hit the stage after that um I think it was like a little over a year Mm. my first show was the first emo night back since like COVID and all that shut everything down Mm. um so it was a pretty crazy first show. It was like a lot more people than I was expecting to play to. <laughs> okay. I mean, but like, what was that like? Just all of a sudden you're on stage or in a band now singing. Um, It kind of like hit me in the middle of my set. I was like, whoa, this is really happening. Like, and then afterwards I was just like, I want to like take this seriously. Like, I really want to do this. Um, And I don't know. I just. I just went for it. I just started like writing more songs and, you know, like flying out to LA to like work with different people and, you know, just trying to like network and like meet as many as possible to like learn more about like the music industry. Hmm. So. Yeah. And also, uh, I've, I'm just going through some stuff I read. It's, you said somewhere that you were like sharing your unique journey with your music. What do you mean by that exactly? So I actually never sang in front of anybody until penny board um it was yeah it was it was literally like our first band practice was like the first time i ever actually sang in front of like more than one person aside from like recording my songs oh, wow. um, okay and i yeah most people would like maybe like take a couple years and like practice and before they like put anything out and i was like no nah, let's just do it and like you <laughs> right. can like hear from like like the first song I ever released to now like the my vocals the the progress that I've made and like even just like my songwriting in general has just gotten like way better um but I never see myself like taking those old songs down because I like you know like seeing the progress yeah sure (laughs) there's no reason I mean that's where you came from you know um I mean what like do you have like goals and expectations with the band specifically the music um I mean I feel like every artist is kind of just always searching for more, you know, like the next big thing you're never satisfied. Mm -hmm. And I've definitely fallen into that. So, you know, I, I just wrote like a whole nother EP that's waiting Mm -hmm. to come out. Um, and now I'm like, all right, let's work on more music. Like (laughs) I want to get back in the studio. I want to play more shows. Um, we have like three shows lined up and I'm just like, I just want to keep like, 
doing everything. I'm going to go on tour again, you know. Cool. I mean, tour. Out there. So you already toured. So like what 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 did that look like? Were you opening for some of your own tour? It's so fun. We've we've done, you know, like mostly DIY tours. Um and then back in December we opened up for uh Jer and Vile. So those were like bigger shows than what I was like used to. Um we had like a green room and everything, which I <laughs> was not used to. Sure. Um so that was pretty cool. I, I definitely want to tour more, whether, you know, just like these little DIY tours are like so fun because it's just like seeing all these local communities get involved in their music scene and everyone just like coming together. And I love it. You know, like everyone's there for the same reason. And sure. it's been, there's like, you know, no pressure and you get to meet new people every day. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny. You lose sight of that in Dallas because there's like in DFW, there's all these venues and you know, there, there's a lot of these little towns all over that it's just like they're going to go to that bar and whatever band's yeah. playing. And if you're even sort of good, they're going to be with you. So you started with photography and video. Is that you were doing that before the music? Yes, okay. I I was doing photography and video for I want to say th- at least three years before, like taking it seriously. You know, mm-hmm. um, it was I was a full time freelancer at one point, but okay. that was really scary. So I didn't want to do that anymore. Oh my god, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it now. It's yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but um, my my I have a twin, and she's a photographer. Oh wow! Um, and I was like, that looks really cool. I want to do that too. So I just started doing it, and okay. then I, you know, because we're twins, everything we do, we do together. And I want it to be a little different, so that, that's when I started doing video. Okay. Um, but ever since I was a kid, I always had like a little disposable camera with me. I have like so many like scrapbooks and like photo albums of things of just like random photos I took as a kid and then you know my mom's like camcorder when I was a kid I was always taking it from her and just like filming everything Mm. no matter what it was um you'll find home videos of like me just like filming a 
the field of flowers and <laughs> right. just the most random stuff. But I, I always like documenting everything. I still do. Um, one of my friends told me that like they can always count on me to have like photos or videos from any special occasion. Right. So. Is that weird though? Like you're now you're on stage and then you're taking photos of a band and you're like back and forth. It's super weird. It's like, it's almost like I know what to do on stage because I know what I would want to shoot. <laughs> like I know. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you're on stage like posing in for good photos sort of pretty kinda? much like i know like I love like that. what like stage <laughs> presence like a lot of photographers sure. are looking for and yeah. like you know make sure like i don't have like the mic stand like right in front of me the whole time because Thank you. Bless they're, gonna, you. they're gonna have to edit yeah. that out later yeah. and, um you know just kind of yeah what i can to help make that process yeah easier. that's i love that it's a trick because i used to play and like it was in la and it wasn't quite the hair band but they would always be like oh those guys are posers and now i'm like bring on the posers i'm like i want someone that knows how to pose on stage like yeah. desperately <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah so it's that's that's funny stuff so i mean was that mostly where you're doing with bands or were you doing all kinds of photography or um because of covid i didn't really have any shows to yeah, shoot so sure. I started getting into portraits. Um, I've been doing a lot more like grad photos, mm -hmm. couple photos, um, and just like like band promos in general. I do a lot of those. I have like a little home studio that I'll set up. Nice. Um, where sometimes we'll just like snap a couple before shows. But I really, really like portraits. I like getting like really creative with portraits. Like how so creative, like lighting and... Uh, yeah, just like different lighting, whatever props we can use. I have this mirror this like vintage old mirror um that i've shot with before and we just kind of like worked with like a lot of different angles so there's it's I, one of my favorite photos i've ever taken was of this band called have near and the band all of the band except for the vocalist is like facing the camera and then he's turned around and you just see his reflection wow. in the mirror nice. so um just playing with like different composition and things like that cool cool um and so you're doing that and then how do you find yourself working with Do It 214? Yeah, so because, you know, like the band and photography and everything, um, I've been able to connect with a lot of different people in the community. So um, when I saw Do 214 was hiring, I was like, that is literally like my dream job. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I just went for it and I got it and like, now I feel like I know like literally everything going on in the DFW area. <laughs> so. Well, tell us, like explain your, your job more specifically if you can. Um, so we have like a newsletter that goes out every single day, um, Monday through Friday at least. And then we're, you know, online and we have um, our site that is just a ton of event listings and editorials of all of the best things going on in DFW. You can find so many different editorials like... Right now I'm working on like a pickleball one mm -hmm. and um, we just uh, released our top 12 picks for you know, summer events. Um, we have like our, our top daily picks um, that you can sort through every single day. And then, you know, like best barbecue, best pizza, like you name it, like it's probably on there. Okay. And then so. I remember my friend telling me something about how you could like sign up and get free tickets for shows or something. Yeah. So we have uh, do two and four more. Um, so it's $5 a month and then you get a pair of tickets every month to, you know, it gives you a whole list to choose from based off of your interest. You can connect it with your Spotify and, you know, it'll like learn like what artists you like to listen to when they're in town. Um, so there's like comedy shows, different dance parties, festivals, um, we've had like food festivals on there before. Those are really exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and just like a whole bunch of different concerts. I remember like, I think it was last year, um, like late last year, we had 1975 tickets. Oh, to wow. Get and people were like really excited for that one. That's pretty so. cool. I was going to ask you like, what are some of the bigger shows? That's a pretty big one. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and then, I, you know, because I shoot a lot of concerts and I'm starting to bump into photographers shooting for do it to enforce. So what's that about like what is that like, that's a new thing right yeah so uh i pretty much just posted on social media saying that we were looking for concert photographers um because whenever i was shooting a lot of concerts i know i i really struggled with getting photo passes because you needed to have like a publication that you were working oh, for yeah, sure. so i want us to be able to you know like help 
local photographers out and like building their portfolio and being able to like work with these other bands and things like that yeah so. it's it's hard yeah because I, I i shoot for observer so some shows i'm the only one that's getting approved but these other shows that i'm too old to know who these bands are <laughs> there's a lot of opportunities so that's pretty cool um like like what do you see like do you have like a like a mission at that job like is there something you're trying to achieve with that or you're just going to try to keep it rolling or how's that we just you know want to be a great resource for the community if you can go on there and find something you want to do tonight within five minutes then we've done our job mm, right <laughs> nice so then you uh when did karma come out Ooh, um it's been a minute over a year ago okay so that was your last release <laughs> uh well the ep came out in september oh okay so, yeah. yeah and that was the first single okay and you said you have shows coming up yes you want to tell us where they're coming up or? uh so we have a show on june 22nd at deep Elm art co um the fourth of july at three leaks mm. and then we haven't announced it yet but It'll probably be announced soon. We're opening for Diva Bleach at Three Links on August 13th. Oh, cool. So. Okay. Sadly, that's probably the only show that will happen after this airs now that yeah, I think about okay. it. <laughs> but that's cool. Ah, oh, man. I usually, I was shooting at Arco a lot and I'm going to be at the Chris Stapleton show that night. So I'm not oh. going to be able to do that. Um, is there anything that you have coming up that you want to tell us about that I didn't ask you or? Mm. I guess girly pop hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, So it's girly pop hours is a queer pop dance party. I have always wanted to go to the club, but I don't really like the music they play at clubs most of the time. Oh, is that the catalyst? (laughs) um, I'm always just like, wow, I wish they would play this at the club. Then I would go and I was like, why don't I just start this? I I posted on my Facebook, you know, why doesn't somebody start a dance party here that plays charlie xcx and chapel run and like all these different artists and people were like we really need that and i've seen parties like that like chapel road night pop up in like a whole bunch of other cities um because she's like taking off right now but yeah so i was like you know what i'm gonna start my own party so i mean i i i'm oblivious to this whole scene but i i assume that you're not alone in this desire to have this happening yes yeah yeah so it's just a whole lot of like LGBT pop artists. Right. And I mean, I saw there's, is it DJs? Are they actually performing? Like So there, there, there's two DJs and they'll be, you know, like curating the vibes, playing all the different requests and things like that. Um, and then we have um, three local drag queens that will be making some guest appearances. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so they'll, they'll all be performing one song each. And yeah, it's just a way to like, support the local queer community and also just like bring everyone together have a great time dance to like all of our favorite songs and we're donating a portion of the proceeds to dallas hope charities so but you're not performing you're just running the night nope just just a host just make sure everything goes smoothly (laughs) okay cool right on um and then with duo two and four is that something an open opportunity or you kind of have all your photographer slots filled um, we're always looking for photographers. It's, you know, if you request a show, there's a chance that somebody else might have already requested it. So it's just kind of first come, first serve, if sure. you will. Do you have writers too that you need, or are you just looking for photographers? Just photographers mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. yeah. And we're always looking for, you know, interns um, every quarter or so. So if you're okay. a college student and you're looking for some marketing experience, then do 214 is. For that. I would love to think that college students are listening to this. <laughs> I feel like my demo is a little higher, but one of the reasons I brought you on, I wanted to see how uh, the younger half lives because I'm like <laughs> ancient over here. Um, anyway, uh, I want to thank you for coming out. Is there anything we didn't cover you want to talk about before we go by? Um, I think that's it. Okay, cool. All right. Well, great. Well, thanks for coming down and talking to me. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Yeah, awesome. I'd like to thank my guest, Faith Elisa Sword. We heard karma during the episode and what if as if is coming up after these messages. You can see more shows coming up and you can get involved with Do 214. Just check the show notes. Thank you again to the Deep Ellum Community Center for letting us record there. Theme song, Unstoppable by Salim Narala. Thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, follow all the good stuff and share it with your friends. We'll see you next time.
understood as if you even 